the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. I vow to thee, my country, all earthly things above, entire, whole and perfect, the service of my love. Thus wrote the poet, and the time now has come to live this love. Seventy-three years and counting, thus far and even further. The senior secondary section of G.D. Goenka Public School, Siliguri, chronicles the mosaic-like patterns of the journey of a young, proud and ambitious nation among setbacks and successes. If yet your blood does not rage, then it is water that flows in your veins. For what is the flush of youth? if it is not of service to the motherland. Chandrasekhar Azad. Jai Hind and good morning to one and all present here at this digital communication. Today we have a special presentation by the senior secondary section to celebrate 73 glorious years of our independence. Over the last seven decades, our country has made notable and significant achievements in the areas of human life, healthcare, culture and so on. And this would not have been possible if we didn't have the values of perseverance, empathy, honesty, efficiency and hard work instilled in us by our elders. This COVID-19 pandemic is proving to be a real test in readdressing these values. For we all know that in troubled times, humane citizens can make all the difference. My fellow Goinkans, through various presentation verticals, will now be sharing the aspects of an eventful but challenging journey in the field of sports, arts and culture, economy, health and lifestyle and human rights. On 15th August 1947, 330 million Indians, that is 13% of world population at that time, were freed from British rule. The 73rd anniversary of our independence is a good time to ask how free are we? The government of India under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has taken important strides especially with the legal reforms with respect to treatment of women, Dalits and other vulnerable classes. Some of the schemes launched by PM Narendra Modi are Beti Bachao, Beti Para, Ujwala, a comprehensive scheme for the protection of trafficking and rescue, Stand Up India, scheme for women, scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and other vulnerable classes, equal rights for transgender and many others. A glass ceiling is a metaphor for mental barriers. Shattering the economic glass ceiling refers to how we Indians since 1947 have gone out of the way and being innovative made an economically crippled British colony to an economic giant that India is today. At the time of independence, agriculture mainly depended on monsoon. At times there was acute shortage and uncertainty. But today rural banks have been set up and loan facilities have been made easier so that farmers can have a better yield and we hope that the other problems in agriculture are solved soon. The risk factor prevented entrepreneurship from flourishing in India as India was a young nation. But now, India is also known as the land of rising entrepreneurship. Liberalization, globalization, privatization, also known as the LPG policy, came in India in the 1990s and since then has helped a lot in the rapid growth of the Indian economy. The Indian economy is now the fifth largest economy in terms of GDP in the world, surpassing UK and France to reach the $2.94 trillion mark. However, our per capita GDP is low owing to the large population but we hope to solve that soon and become a $3 trillion economy which is our dream. The Corona situation has led many to lose their jobs. We hope that we can hold hands and as Indians together help those in need. 
As a nation, we have been innovative and have managed to find workable solutions suited to our environment. We need to draw on the deep urge to succeed that the nation builders had to walk the road ahead. Jai Hind! Next two minutes, we are going to show you a glimpse of a journey in the field of art, sports and culture. India is a country where sports bind every man, woman, culture and tribe in a single thread. From cricket to kabaddi, a young member of the house to elderly. The admiration and the popularity of sports is in each and every corner of the country. Indian art history in the post-independence era has been a complex negotiation between a colonial and nationalist epistemological legacy on the one hand and new approaches that were developed within the discipline in India and periodic influences from Western art history on the other hand. Indian sons and daughters have proven her endowment at many world level events too. Sachin Tendulkar in cricket, Vishwanathan Anand in chess, Mary Ko in boxing, Paichun Bhutia in football, and Sanya Mirza in tennis. Undoubtedly, the achievements of India in the field of sports are mention worthy. No nation can move in the path of development without accepting and overcoming challenges. Denial of sports infrastructure due to poverty, lack of encouragement to girls to participate in sports have impaired the development of positive sports culture in the country. With the digitalization of the country, digital art has been accepted by strong. It became popular and opened up opportunities for the artists and helped them reach the corner they were returned to and reach again. From being a country of folk and classical music, Indians have also embraced other dance forms such as hip hop, jazz, contemporary and more which has now become an integral part of our culture. In the post-independence era, Indian musicians have also popularized Indian music at a global level. World Hit came home for every Indian family when television was introduced in the year 1959. From one channel to 902 channels, Indian television industry has seen a paradigm shift. From single screen to multiplexes, Indian flip industry has given us a combination of art industry and showmanship. The Kelo India program and the assistance to National Sports Federation scheme are some great initiatives taken by government to encourage the youth of the country towards sports. As Malkuri has said, India is the cradle of human race, the birthplace of human speech, the mother of history, the grandmother of legend and the great grandmother of tradition. Our most valuable and instructive tradition are loyal in India only. My India, my pride, Jai Hind. Water in our country might be laid in the taps, but we were the first country to find water on moon. In 1963, our first rocket was launched on a cycle, and now one of the world's best space agencies is ISRO. ISRO launched 104 satellites, which is world's highest number of satellites to be launched on a single flight. With Mangalyaan, India was the first country to reach Mars on its first go with a budget of $73 million, which is less than the cost of Hollywood movie Gravity, budget of $130 million. From pi to zero, from number system to decimal system, from algebra to trigonometry, and much more were discovered by Indian mathematicians. Shakuntala TV calculated this figure in just 28 seconds and won the title of world's fastest human calculator. From discovery of plastic surgery to the first medical college in the world, we, the second largest population in the world, have the cheapest car and the cheapest 4G LED mobile plans. Giving access, ease and opportunities of internet to every citizen in the country. Currently, there are approximately 560 million internet users in India. That is why companies like Netflix and Amazon Prime release their cheapest plan in India. CEOs of most of the world's biggest companies like Google, Microsoft, Adobe, PepsiCo, Mastercard are Indians. Spinning wheel, zinc and diamond mining, the Fibonacci series, 
binary coding and ruler is just present because of us. From world's fastest missile Brahmos to thorium based nuclear power country is India. Jai Hind. In this module of the presentation, let's look at the improvement in healthcare and changes in lifestyle in India since independence. Healthcare in India has improved substantially since independence. In fact, despite being in the developmental stage, healthcare facilities in India attract several foreigners who seek holistic healing at cheaper rates. In fact, Kerala has become the capital of Ayurvedic treatment which is both exotic as well as wholesome in its process. After a long drawn struggle, India has finally been declared a polio-free country since 2014. The Swachh Bharat Abhiyan has provided impetus to stop open defecation and prevent spread of communicable diseases. The government has launched a series of ambitious initiatives including Healthcare for All by 2020 and distribution of free medicines to the people falling under lowest income group. Indian lifestyle have seen a gigantic shift with the intervention of modern routines in upbringing since independence. What once was considered impossible in India has now become a pleasing reality. Women in India who were once considered only as homemakers and whose abilities were judged only fit for performing household chores are now emerging as nation builders and are actively participating, diminishing ritual beliefs and values. New generation are picking up the modern age philosophies of personal choice and freedom on discovering their religion on their own. Some changing values are Sati Pratha was abolished, people are becoming more independent, girls are getting better education and lifestyle, and people are more liberal while accepting third gender. As dystopian as the world seems today, let us case our minds to our rich and varied past and the plethora of achievements we have under our belt as a nation. On this very day in 1947, we threw off the foreign yoke and became a sovereign country. From being a third world country with a fledgling economy, we have gone to being the preceptor of the world and the fifth largest economy. From India's first national hockey team winning the 1948 Summer Olympics to Milka Singh's golden hat-trick from 1958 to 1962. From leading poverty-stricken lackluster lifestyles to a health-conscious medically superior country, we have time and again displayed how practical values such as perseverance, tolerance and open-mindedness and innovation when combined together can pave the way for what was once called a country of slaves to become a global leader today. We are called to find something in our lives worth fighting. For something that unites the will of the spirit with the work of the flesh. Something that will help us lift this nation and its people to that place where the mind is without fear where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, our Father, let our country away. Let us all live our life unprejudiced and open-minded, accepting new challenges and changes. I say this with confidence and belief that India will never lose the capacity to listen to its feeblest voice, that it will never lose the sight of its ancient ideals. Years ago, Lord Buddha said, Be the lamp unto yourself. If we are to follow his teachings, acting together with the passion of our freedom movement, we can collectively be the 138 crore lamps that will light up the path to a new India. Once again, I wish each of you a very happy Independence Day. Jai Hind.